me magic powers there for a minute. Anyway, stay tuned if you want to see how I did it. But first, a very quick recap to jog your memory. Pre-lockdown, this used to be the alleyway next to a garage, which we partitioned off for this walk-in wardrobe and an ensuite. But due to lockdown, I wasn't able to visit and build the compartments, so my dad did it. Then months later when we moved in, I cut some clothes rails and screwed them to the top shelf. And you can do this with any section of your house. And a year later of using it like this, it's time. I'm finally taking three measurements, top, middle and bottom, widthways, and three measurements from top to bottom. And rounded those down so it wouldn't be too tight and I could fill with packers. And I got started on making my frame with melamine MDF because my dad's got loads down his wood yard. And I cut two for the top, two for the bottom because one will be acting as a plinth and the top I'll need to plane down because whose roof is exactly straight? To get your height lengths, a quick tip is to hook a tape measure onto the two bottom pieces and mark your height on an upright. Reduce that down by two top pieces and I cut six lengths to the shorter mark. For the middle lengths, because they'll have doors hanging on them, I reinforce them by screwing two together. I also found some free MDF profile doors. I evenly spaced those out. Now for the filler piece, screw to create a corner. That would allow me to shave off a piece easily if I needed to, if my walls weren't straight. I'm now screwing the rest of the framework together, pre-drilled the top piece, clamped up some propy up pieces, and I could screw the top on without getting any help. Now I'm getting a visual to see how my wardrobe doors look. Yep, good enough for me. Now it's time to cut holes for the concealed hinges on the back of the doors. I'm using a drill press here with a hinge cutter and a stock piece. Just make sure when you're setting it up, do a test piece first in case you don't go straight through your good door. Next, I screwed three hinges on each one. I set the mounting plates back by three and a half centimeters, copied from a kitchen carcass I found, and as carefully as I could, rested one of the doors on top, flush top and bottom, and drew where the hinge screw holes were, but made sure I drilled and screwed on the line. After repeating the rest, I found the hinges altered the door's placement, meaning I need to move one of the uprights. To make up for it, I screwed on another filler piece, and for now, cut some cover trim to hide these, but to the height of the frame, including the top and bottom piece that I haven't added yet. How am I gonna get this home and through my doors? I hand sawed where the double uprights joined. I found a cheap pack of knobs and drilled through the doors using a quick jig. But before I show you how I installed it all in my house, I'd like to thank Regatta Workwear for sponsoring this project. Since me and my husband started to go walking and camping 12 years ago, I've worn Regatta clothes pretty much right from the start. And throughout all of my past projects, you'll see that I find them great for working in too. Rain, snow or shine. It seems that I have a Regatta coat obsession. And surprise, surprise, of course I also own one of their stripy tops. I've just always liked Regatta because they're warm, practical, and another key factor for me is that they're really affordable, such as their snuggly fleeces, body warmers, jackets, and work trousers, which all come in a range of different colors and materials. Plus another thing I really like about the designs is that they all tend to come with pockets and lots of them. No pockets, no sale. So if you are looking to stock up on workwear, then I'll leave a link to the Regatta store below where you can also find a whole range for men and women, including a discount code, to save you a bit more money. Okay, so I'm now back at home. I'd originally planned to leave a two inch gap from the front of the top shelf, but as I had door architrave around here, I thought it was best to position it next to it, leaving a few mil to play with and cut out with my multi-tool and copy the same distant measurement from the skirting board on the opposite side. Then I could fit the bottom plinth across the floor to start planning where I'd screw a mounting batten on the wall either side. There was a bow in the middle of the architrave and to straighten it I temporarily stuck coins along it and checked with my spirit level and drew the thickness of my trim. Trim piece, filler piece, batten. I drilled and screwed the plinths down in line with the back of the trim but after drilling holes in the batten I'd line it up with a final mark and drill through it again to mark on the wall. Make a larger hole with a six millimeter drill bit. We're going for metal ones. I've got the right screw for this. I've had to buy them especially though. And twist and press in a metal plasterboard fixing using a flathead screwdriver. Just temporarily put that in and use my combi drill on a low torque setting. Now, the moment of truth. Do a dry fit to see if everything slots in okay. I'm so glad I used coins to space it out. I think that would have been tight. Oh, that's good, that's good. Yes, she went in. 
Once I knew all was looking good, it was time to make sure the rest was level, which allowed me to start planning the final batten on the opposite side. To work out the top section though, I screwed the middle frame down to the bottom and the side together. I got obsessive with checking with the spirit level again, it can't hurt, and worked out how much I needed to plane off the top piece that I couldn't avoid. I hot glued some strips to a sheet of plywood to keep it steady and used my electric plane. And after checking for high spots and repeating, I was able to slot it on top. That's it. Check the level again and drew on the ceiling for reference so I could unscrew and remove some of the sections while I drilled through it in the ceiling and added more plasterboard fittings. I used packers as I went. Oh, we stay in, yes. Right, top's on. Time to get it all back. So I've had to undo the plasterboard screw to bring it down because there were a gap between the two top pieces and I wasn't happy at all. So I've unscrewed that a little bit, pulled this back and I'm trying to pack as many packers in as I can. I nipped it together, nice. That makes me so happy. To mount it more, I pre-drilled the two filler pieces either side and fixed it to the button behind. Let's get some doors before I start putting the trims on, just in case I have to alter anything. Prop. And snap them on. Yes. Oh, that's cool. But, off camera, I swapped the middle doors for the 170 degree ones so I could fully open them back, which massively changed the space in between, even on the max. So my dad had to drop off two ripped down pieces of MDF, same as a framework, so I could pack the hinges out. It turned out the first position would have been perfect. And after a lot of tweaking to line up all the doors, take the door off. My dad gave me this really sticky double-sided tape with a mesh inside. That is really sticky. I ran all along one of the back ones and I was concerned I'd struggle to wedge it in between the skirting and the architrave. Don't stick anywhere, I don't want you to. <laughs> Break. Oh, so sticky. After a lot of swearing, take two. Using a sharp knife and WD 40 to make it less sticky and a thorough clean, I went for silicon instead and packers to wedge it in while it's set. I've definitely learnt my lesson on the opposite side and just use that sticky stuff in small strips. Right, don't stick in a place I don't want you to stick again. Oh, that I'm happy with. And even smaller pieces along the top for a final top trim before corking all of the joins. Much better. And if it helps, I'm going to leave a video here on how we converted our garage into an ensuite and walk-in wardrobe. <laughs> he loves that spot.